Hello everyone, this is Flo754 with another part of the Saints Row 4 modding tutorial series and in this video I'm going to show you how you can convert your FBX files you generated at the end of the last tutorial to Saints Row 4's proprietary 3D file format. We're going to achieve that by using the official SR4 modding SDK, so let's just get going. By default you will not be able to run this tool because it's not an executable file but rather a Python script, and in order to run it, you will have to have some specific software installed on your PC that is capable of interpreting Python code. Now, Randall has already made a tutorial about setting up the SDK when it was first released, so I highly recommend you watch his video first, and once you get the tool up and running, get back to this video here. The first thing we'll have to do, once we open the FBX converter, is checking the settings. You want to triangulate the mesh that you're importing, you also want to remove temporary files after the conversion process is done, and also note that you have to use this setting if you made use of the MEA template I presented in the last tutorial. Even though we exported files using the settings Y up in centimeters and not Z up in inches. That's just the way this MEA template works. Anyways, let's just go on to importing our FBX file. Right now the script is parsing the data, and as you can see, this takes quite a bit of time, because the files are rather big, so that's also a reason why we deleted the character's body in Maya last time around. That way we reduced our file size a little, keeping the importing process shorter. Once you're done importing, you have to select the mesh you want to convert. In our case, there's only one, with a bunch of plant shapes. Also you have to assign one of Saints Row's shaders to the material you created in Maya. Now, the material only holds a normal map and a diffuse map, so we're going to go with IR at BB Simple 1, which supports normal maps, diffuse maps and spectral maps, as those are all we need. Next you'll have to click CMesh X and Morph X down here. These are the files we want to get out of the conversion. Once you're done, hit Convert. Click OK. That should have created a new folder in your 3D export stuff folder called Output, which contains all the files the converter produced. Then let's just package our mod using the files the computer created for us. So select the folder your mod files are stored in. Hitting package will now update your str 2 pc files and also the ASM pc file. Those files will then contain your custom art assets. Basically, all we have to do now before updating our mod in the workshop is copying the cmorph pc file from our output folder and pasting it in our mod folder. Done. Now let's upload our files by dragging them over to this window. Click File, Save, to Steam Workshop, and then update your mod. Changes in this update are that we added a custom 3D model. Upload and unsubscribe so you can subscribe again. Then open Saints Row 4. So, back at Planet Zen, we can have a look at our fully custom clothing item. As you can see, it exported pretty well, but there are some issues. For example, in areas where two different clothing items are supposed to overlap, you'll notice some major clipping. Usually, you would now go back to Maya 3D and update your model so this doesn't happen, so that the pants don't protrude through the vest. Something else I would like to fix is that, with this item selected, you can still see this necklace here, even though it's actually supposed to be covered by the armor plates. The last thing I'm not too happy with is this color selection screen here. You'll notice that adjusting the colors here won't affect the model's look at all, because we're only using a diffuse map for the color information of this model and not one of Saints Row's very own pattern maps, which allow for this kind of dynamic color customization. 
So we're also going to make sure that this color selection screen doesn't even show up in order to avoid any kind of confusion. If you want to make this kind of change, you'll have to edit your mod's customization items to Lexible. So let's just open it with Notepad++. Getting rid of the color selection screen is pretty easy. You simply have to scroll down until you see these default color options and the default colors grid tag. So by deleting this entire section here, you're removing the color selection options for good. Next, let's make sure we hide any kind of necklace as soon as we equip our custom item. In order to achieve that, we'll have to add a new obscured slot tag. So let's just copy one of these segments here and edit the variable between the two slot tags. In order to hide a necklace like this, you'll have to write in long chain. I'll be sure to also display all other slot names somewhere here on the screen for reference. So just save your file. And update the mod again. Also, I'll include a thumbnail picture for the mod right now by browsing and selecting a JPEG, PNG or GIF file. It's important that this file is uh, smaller than, than one megabyte in size and also uh, it's recommended that it is a square image. As you can see, this fixed some of my issues. The necklace is hidden now and the color selection screen is entirely gone. Finally, let's customize our character's body at an image's design store and see if the clothing item deforms nicely. Yet again, if you run into any clipping issues here, you have to go back a few steps and modify your model in Maya. As always with modding, Trial and error is key. Alright, this about wraps up the base tutorial series. Any other videos from now on will focus on more advanced SDK features or troubleshooting. I really hope you enjoyed watching these videos and if you have any unanswered questions or can't quite get a mod to work, please write a comment here or go to sinstrommods.com for help. See you around!